Hey guys, welcome back once again to Kayfabe TV. We're going to be continuing our Brawl Deck series, this time featuring Ariel, Knight of Windgrace, one of the new legends from Dominaria. Let's take a look. So Ariel, Knight of Windgrace, is a 4 mana legendary human knight. She's 2, a white and a black. She's 4-4, four, four. she's got Vigilance, and she is uh, a great support card for the Knight theme. If you're going for a Knight's deck, this is a great centerpiece for this deck. Um, being our commander means that she's going to be able to make an influence over the course of the game. Early play, you know, she's a 4 mana creature, she's got a decent body. But then late game, you get to really take advantage of her, her uh, activated abilities. So she has two activated abilities... She's got a, an ability that lets you create a knight token. It's two and one white. You tap her and create a 2-2 two, two white knight token with vigilance. And then her other ability is a, a way of controlling the board. So it's one black mana. You tap her and you tap X untapped knights you control. And you can destroy target creature with power X or less. So this is a great way for Ariel in a, in a stalled game. If you've got lots and lots of board presence to start clearing away your opponent's creatures. Uh, she can also generate you that army so you have all the bodies required to take advantage of that removal that she has. Uh, she's a great card. I, I think she probably could have used Lifelink, but that's that's probably more of a personal preference than than an actual sort of, you know, function, functionally would make too much of a difference. But I don't know. I felt this card should have Lifelink, but Vigilance is all good, especially with those two activated abilities. So Ariel isn't the only creature we have featured in this deck. Let's have a look at some of the other ones we have. So we have gone in deep on the knight theme. I've scoured the spoiler lists for every knight creature that um, that's in the current standard sort of set. Um, and yeah, we, we're playing just about all of them. Now there's a, there's a kind of couple of themes within the creatures of this, uh, of this deck. We've got a whole bunch of knights, obviously, they're all knights, but there's also sort of a vampire sub-theme as well. So you'll notice that there's a few cards that cater to the vampire quota that we have in this deck. So starting from the top, we've got Dauntless Bodyguard, Banalish Honor Guard, Metallic Mimic, Oathsworn Vampire, Paladin of Atonement, and Blood Crazed Paladin. So these guys are your, are your little fellas. There's a, a little bit of utility there in the turn, in, in the way of uh, Dauntless Bodyguard. Uh, Metallic Mimic can make your other guys get pretty big. Uh, Oathsworn Vampire, Recursion, Paladin of Atonement. Uh, it's going to get pretty big in a multiplayer game. This guy can get out of control pretty quick. And Blood, Blood Crazed Paladin will save this for a board sweep and he's going to come down uh, absolutely huge. He's going to be a big body. We then got uh, Knight of Grace, sorry, yeah, Knight of Grace. We've got Knight of Malice. We've got Benalish Marshall, Elinda the Dusk Rose, Queen Day, Pride of Feramiv, Josu Vess, Lich Knight. So the two knights probably don't need much explanation. They are very, very efficient for their mana cost. Um, please keep, keep in mind that both of those knights get the plus one, plus one, as long as any player controls a permanent of the opposite color. So if you control a black permanent and you've got Knight of Grace, she, she gets the plus one, plus O. The Knight of Malice, same thing. If you control a white permanent, doesn't have to be your opponents. These guys are going to be come down as 3-2 first strikers, hex brute from either white or black. Uh, it's, it's really efficient. Benalish Marshall, yeah, the, the mana cost is a little bit restrictive, but the Anthem effect is great. Um, Alenda, all good. Love that card. Queen Day, yeah, I, I don't know about Queen Day. He's probably the weakest of the of the creatures that we have in this deck. Um, though there are a couple of cards that support him quite well, um, which you'll see pretty soon. And then Josu, of course. Josu can finish games for you. If, if the game goes long, um, this guy can do it. We've got a few more vampires here. Sanctum Seeker, Champion of Dusk. We've got Arvid as well, and we've got Fona. So Arvad is um, a classic pairing up with Queen Day. Um, he's Queen Day's straight away going to go to a four four and and double strike in for eight. Um, he also happens to pump up Ariel, happens to pump up Vona, happens to pump up 
Linda. So there's, there's a little bit of um, sort of extra mileage out of his passive um, legendary creatures get plus two, plus two. Vona, great control. Um, left unchecked, she can really run over a game. Champion of Dusk, well, he'll, he'll draw you at least one card, hopefully a couple. If, if he comes down after you've managed to get um, an Alenda to, to hit the graveyard, then you can draw quite a bit. So there's a, you'll notice, yeah, again, there's a big vampire sort of sub-theme. All of these creatures are knights, so they'll pair up really nicely with Ariel's uh, activated abilities. We aren't playing too many cards in the way of instants or sorceries in this deck, and most of the cards either fulfill giving you cards in hand or removing potential problems on the board. So we're playing really common cards you'd see in any standard deck. Fatal Push, Cast Down. We've got Invoke the Divine against Artifacts and Enchantments, Call the Cavalry, we've got Dark Bargain in there for a little bit of card advantage, I really like that card. We've got, of course, Ruska's Contempt, and we're playing a single copy of uh, Yulmos Vile Offering. Everything's a single copy in this deck, but this happens to be a very special single copy of Yulmos Vile Offering. Uh, I really like this card. Um, it's Yeah, there's a restriction there, you need to have a legendary creature all Planeswalker in play, um, but yeah, this, is, this is a commander type format, browser format, you're going to be playing a legendary permanent of some description at some point during the game, and this is a, a quite a big swing, quite a big impact. We're playing a few enchantments too. Enchantments are all about utility, they occupy a similar space in the deck as the instants and sorceries do. So we've got a little bit of card draw in the form of Argyle's Bloodfast, this will flip of course into Temple. We've got Seal Away, I'm trying a copy of Triumph of Gerard. I like, I like that card, it's cute. We've got Radiant Destiny, of course, name knights, pump up all your dudes, potentially give them vigilance, this works really well with, uh, with Ariel's activated abilities. We've got Cast Out in there to take care of annoying permanence. History of Benalia, this is going to feed you a couple more bodies, it's going to pump up all of your guys. Great finisher if you need to go quite wide. And, uh, and take out an opponent or two. Playing a single copy, of course, again, of Gideon's Intervention. Everything's a single copy in this deck. It's a Highlander format, so um, I shouldn't have to say that, so I apologise. But Gideon's Intervention, we've got in there. This will take care of opposing commanders pretty easily. They need to deal with this card before they can cast their commander again. And then we're playing a copy of uh, the Eldest Reborn as well. Um, a little bit more effective in a multiplayer game, multiplayer format, than single player. It's, um, it's a little bit cumbersome. I, I, I just like the recursion aspect at the tail end of it. So a little bit of board control, a little bit of hand control, and you're going to get back a creature or a plane circuit from any graveyard at the end of it. Last enchantment we have is Profane Procession. Flips into Tomb of the Dusk Rose. So this, again, a little bit of control for the board. Late game can feed you an army. Pretty effective. So there are only three artifacts in this deck. We're playing Sorcerer's Spyglass to take care mainly of opposing planeswalkers. We've got a Vanquisher's Banner, which will pump up all your guys. It's going to draw you a card as well, so a little bit of card advantage that you're able to get there. And then we're playing the Immortal Sun as well. So this is a real uh, kind of sideboard card, which happens to be main deck against opposing planeswalkers. There aren't any planeswalkers in our deck. So um, this is a great way of, um, of eliminating the, the effects that those Planeswalkers have over the course of a game. You draw your additional card during your draw step, or your spells cost one less to cast, all your creatures get plus one plus one. This is, a, this is great. If you can drop it, it's, it's pretty good, especially if you've got a big army and a decent hand, which you will fill up pretty quickly from that extra draw. And lastly we have land. So there's not too many non-basic lands in this. I'm Pretty mindful of cards that have a heavy color requirement like Banalish Marshall. So there's more of a leaning to being able to make sure that we can cast those cards rather than going for the utility in the minor base. Um, we have got a little bit there though in the way of Memorial to Folly and Chefnet Dunes. We've got an unclaimed territory, just name knights and you can cast any of your creatures. Uh, we've got some, some dual lands in the form of Concealed Courtyard, Forsaken Century, Isolated Chapel and then we round that out. Of course, with our planes and swamps, and playing 11 planes and 7 swamps in this deck. 
Well, this concludes the deck list for the Ariel Brawl deck. There are a few other cards that I thought about including in this deck, but you're kind of on slim pickings in terms of the creature base at the moment. Maybe when the next standard seats set is released, uh, the core set, I think it is, we'll get a few more knights that we can potentially slot onto a couple of those sort of weaker positions in the creature suite. Uh, Ariel's a, a, a cool commander. She's a she's a fun card to play around. You know, once you've got a little bit of a board presence with at least a couple of knights, um, she can really control the board pretty effectively. Um, keep in mind that you can, uh, because she has vigilance, you can run into somebody untapped, and then rely on that off turn play to create a knight token or to destroy a creature. She's uh, she's pretty versatile in that regard. I'm happy to hear any considerations if you guys have any cards that, that you thought might make a good impact in the deck. Please leave a, a comment in the comment section below. Thanks again if you do like the video. really appreciate the likes, guys. Um, the, the views have been getting up there, so again, I really appreciate it. I'm doing this just purely for fun, out of interest, so it's, it's great to have that, uh, that support from you guys. Thank you if you've subscri subscribed to the channel too. Really appreciate it. We'll be back with a little bit more MTG and gaming content really soon. So thanks once again, guys, and we'll catch you on the next video.